again for another video in a different time of the year. We are here in uh, autumn, we're in specifically in November, and I've waited till this time to shoot this video um, to tell you all about selecting the right plant for the right place. Okay, so we're in our beautiful orchard, uh, Allo Dean Nurseries, and we're amongst our stock beds. Now, a stock bed is where, uh, because we have the nursery that grows its own plants, we created these stock beds where we plant a lot of perennials, lift and divide them, we plant shrubs and take cuttings from them, and so they become mother plants for all of the baby plants that we produce in the nursery and sell to businesses and to the public. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you about is about a lot of people have asked me questions about, John, how do I get my border to look really great? How do I make it look good and spectacular all the year round? How do I choose the right plant for the right place? And so what I'm going to do is uh, give you a video that you can also use for those that are doing the garden design qualification about doing planting schemes. So it's planning and planting out a border. So I'm not going to specifically tell you how to plant the plants, but I'm going to tell you how to select them and where to place them. And it's a question that we get asked all the time when people come in, uh, to the nursery to buy plants off me. They're always asking me, John, what plant goes there? Where should I put that plant? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a really easy formula well, I say it's really easy. It seems easy to me. I've been doing it for quite a few years, but it's stuck with me and hopefully it'll stick with you. And it's an easier formula so that you don't get baffled and see like hundreds and thousands of plants. You think, where am I going to put that plant? Where do I put this plant? And where? What you'll be doing is trying to put order into the chaos that's there. And I've done that with these plants here. I have selected these plants that are on this table. This is for our uh, sunny or sun facing border. So a lot of these plants. Uh, do well in full sun um, and so we're going to look at a full sun border and we're going to look at a uh, shady border as well so this let's do the first one which is a full sun border and what I've done is I've created order amongst the chaos already because the first thing that I've done is I've put the split the plants out by the seasons so if we start at this end we've got this lovely seed and this stone crop here as you know we're in uh, the autumn now it's got a lovely pink flower that's on there it's absolutely gorgeous um, and this represents autumn and again another plant that I've got behind here is a grass which is a New Zealand wind grass it's a beautiful grass it's lovely lush dark green uh, in uh, the summer has wonderful flowers on the top but also as the autumn comes um, this foliage starts to change these lovely orange red and bronzy colors so this is um, autumn that's sorted out and then Obviously the next season on from autumn is the winter and there's all sorts of plants that we've got that represent winter here. Um, now there is one plant here that, that's quite that's the odd one out. And what I've got here is a, um, a willow, a Salix pretensis, which has beautiful orange stems, can you see them, that really stand out on a stark winter's day. Don't just think about winter colour as being they're evergreen and they've got leaves on all the time. These have got these wonderful stems. And all you have to do is in March, cut this back really hard and you'll get a, even more of these lovely orange and red uh, and yellow stems that will come next year. And those are dogwoods and uh, willows that have specifically these colored stems. Some of them are red, purple, orange, yellow. I think they've even got some pink ones now and they really stand out on a stark winter's day. Put it next to something green and you've got this amazing sort of colour that stands out um, and gives interest in the garden. But again, I've got variegated stuff that's, that's here. Um, and what I've done is I've also sorted out with the tallest at the back going down to the shortest at the front. So that's another important thing that you need to consider with uh, your border is how it's going to be viewed. Is it going to be viewed from both sides? If so, you're going to need to put tallest in the middle, shortest uh, around the edges. But if it's going to be viewed from one side, tallest go at the back shortest at the front. I know that probably sounds like it's common sense uh, and like I'm teaching grandma to suck eggs but if you put tall stuff at the front and short stuff at the back you're not going to see it. There are a few exceptions to the rules and we'll get to that a little bit later on. So we've got this wonderful Hebe that's here. That's a fairly low growing plant. Um, if you want something tall but has a lovely shape we've got this lovely juniper that has this wonderful conical shape. Uh, gives a sort of real Mediterranean feel and again it's not just green it's a slight blue color so it adds that interest to it. Um, don't forget you've also got variegation so don't just think about evergreen as just being green what we tend to look at is, is that certain plants like this holly 
this is classed as static color so pretty much that holly is going to be that color all of the year round and if we just had the ordinary green all that you'd be getting would be that dark green and that's it it would be there and that's great because you know you've got a canvas that it's always going to be the same it's going to be consistent it might change a little bit if you've got a male and a female and you get red berries on it but generally speaking it is what it is but what's made it a little bit more interesting is the variegation that's as bright as a flower particularly in winter and it's much much more reliable flowers fade and they pass away and they go and you can have gaps whereas this this is your friend that's always going to be there it's always going to look after you if you ring it up at two o'clock in the morning to help you with a problem that's the kind of plant it is in your garden it's a really really reliable plant it's color but you don't just have to have green you can have these variegations um so we've got a uh, euonymus that's variegated that's a nice low growing plant um, and it behaves itself so it doesn't get too tall so we can put it in the middle or closer to the front and also we've got another one uh choice of or mexican orange blossom even though the blossom it flowers in march it has this wonderful evergreen glossy foliage uh, it's got a slight smell to it that smells sort of citrusy um but it also the new foliage that comes on it can you see how it's coming out this lovely bright yellow that really stands out um, so we're not just relying on the spring flowers we're relying on the foliage and it's good consistent evergreen winter color and winter is where you always begin when you're doing an a border because any fool can go into a garden center on a lovely spring day in may they wait for a bank holiday or they go on a friday before the bank holiday think right let's get the garden sorted out and they walk into a garden center and the garden centers know this and what they do is by all the doors by all the entrances they put the most brightly colored flowers and springtime in england is great it is wonderful and that, that's the best time of, of year to sell lots and lots of different colored plants and the garden centers know that but if you do that you will fill your garden with spring color and the chances are you won't have any other color for the rest of the year so actually if you're going to start planting up your border you need to start looking in the garden centers around about now in the winter time because what's going to happen is this is the most difficult time of year to create color in the garden so it should be the time of year when you should start planning and placing your plants out for that so that in a moment i'm going to show you how to place the plants out winter will always go in first that is your framework it's always going to be there it's always going to be consistent as well so that holly is consistent color so it's going to be there all year round as well so it's a great framework to build the rest of your border around so we move on from uh winter and we start moving towards uh the spring now what you'll notice is that in winter what we used a lot of was shrubs and trees and things like that so shrubs are perennials that keep coming back each year but they put on woody growth so that's like when you cut into it it's got lots and lots of rings and it's hard growth and what you start to see actually when we move into the summer what we're becoming more and more reliant upon is using perennials so in the spring there is one shrub that i put in there this is one lovely lovely shrub which is called azara serrata and there's one of our friends the ladybirds oh that's our friend in the garden gets rid of all the aphids nice to see that there azara serrata is a shrub it produces woody growth but in may time it produces these wonderful beautiful yellow flowers that have a really sweet smell so what we're starting to see with this garden when you're producing a planting scheme is that it's not just about what you can see but what you can smell okay we spoke about choice of tonata that having another sort of citrusy smell if you touch the leaves well this flower Will, will put lovely scents that will, will, will go through the garden and a lovely color of that color yellow so that's the azara serrata that's a shrub that we have for the spring and also we have other plants that you can infill in between so we've got this one here this is cyclamen so this one's flowering now it's a hardy cyclamen they come out in the autumn and they also can come out in the spring and that's like a bulb that comes out from a corn that grows up and another plant is this one here is a primrose so you can see that the primrose is they'd flowered back uh, in the um, spring but sometimes a lot of your spring plants sometimes come out in the autumn as well and you can see the primrose is starting to put on flowers as well in the autumn that's great that's a wonderful plant if you can get a plant that can produce color in different seasons in a transient way it's earned its keep because the most important thing is space in your garden especially if you've got a small garden that if you put in a plant in that space and it only looks great for two weeks that's a poor investment as far as gardening goes but if it looks great one month and it looks great another month 
that is an amazing investment you can make in a plant that you put within your border. So it's important to think of the things that way. And the other thing that um, uh, that you've got to think of as well, we've got Jacob's Ladder here. Obviously it's looking a bit sorry and poor at the moment because we're in the autumn, it's going to be dying back. And a lot of these plants you're going to struggle to get this time of year unless you come to uh, Oak Dean Nurseries, which uh, is a nursery and grows all these plants. We don't just sell plants because they're in colour. We sell plants because we grow them here on site all year round. Whereas a lot of gardens, they tend to buy them in and they only buy in stuff that's in colour, uh, that's got flowers on or has interest. Um, so it's very difficult to buy all of these plants at once. But don't worry, if you can only go to garden centres, just choose certain months to go. But if you are going to choose to go, go in the winter first, like I said. So you choose all your winter colour first to make it um, a, uh, a framework that you build around. But you'll notice that we've got something like, um, I don't know, we've got a primrose and we've got a Jacob's Ladder um, and we've got the Azara. That's early spring for the primrose, that's mid spring for the Azara and that's late spring early summer for the Jacob's Ladder. So when you think about your seasons, what you try and think about is when in that season, out of those 12 weeks, is it going to be in flowering colour? And try and spread it through so that you get this burst of colour, pockets of colour that come up all through the year. Because what you're looking at is not look, a border isn't about filling gaps of space, it's about filling gaps of time as well. And time might be um, winter, which is one of the most difficult times of the year to fill with colour and interest. Um, so you're looking at filling every single season with colour, so it's gaps within the seasons. And so when you move on from spring, we move into summer. And what you can move in as well is, um, is plants also have a use. So it works great in the summer, particularly through the summer months with some of these. So we've got sweet marjoram, again that has a lovely flower uh, in the summer. And we've got mint, also has a lovely flower in, in the summer, and they're useful. You can use that for cooking with, you can use mint for, for, for cooking with and for making sauces and things like that. So you're adding another dimension to the use of your board. It doesn't look, just look good, doesn't just smell good, doesn't just feel good, it's got taste as well. So you, you can use it there. And there's some plants, you can put fruit trees and things like that, that, you, that, that are edible, uh, that gets you much more out of your, your border. And so we've got other summer plants. There's early summer flowering plants and there's late summer flowering plants. I've got uh, a yarrow here that's in flower. Um, it shouldn't really be in flower this, this time, but that sort of starts sort of June, July. Um, and then we move on to this lovely verbena bonoriensis, which has those lovely purple flowers that flower towards the end of the summer. And you're starting to move back round into the autumn again. Another one that I've got here, a nice low growing plant, is uh, a statue's Byzantine, which is a, a, a lamb's ear. And again, don't just think about how it looks, how it smells, whether you can eat it, but how does it feel? It's got a lovely furry leaf that you can touch. It's got a lovely sensory feel to it. And the great thing about herbaceous perennials is, is although a lot of them die back into the root and won't come up till spring next year, some of them actually have evergreen herbaceous growth. So this Statue's Byzantine has this lovely silvery growth that will be there in the winter. And it looks even better when it gets covered in frost. And it's a great ground cover plant. And ground cover plants are really nice because you can put them at the front of the border and what it does is it suppresses the weeds and stops them from coming up. So all of these plants, they have all sorts of different uses. But also you've got infills that you can put in. So we can infills in gaps, in time and in space. So like in the summer, I've got one here. This is a calendula, uh, which is a pot marigold, which is left over from summer bedding. You could sow this seed in April, or you can go to the garden centre and buy some summer bedding and just fill it in the gaps. This has been flowering since, um, really, since probably about the end of May, all the way till now. So that's a really great plant for your money. As long as you just keep taking off the deadheads like that, it'll keep going all, all through the summer. And again, there's one other thing, and I'm going to show you what happened. Because on the silk and spice route, they came the same way as what I'm going to pull out of my pocket here, which are bulbs. So basically, the silk and spice route opened up a long, long time ago, sort of really back to the Roman times. And people were seeing plants by the side of the road, and they dug them up, and they noticed that they died down into these wonderful things, these wonderful food stores, such as bulbs and corms. There's the daffodil. And there is the crocus. And again, you have another gap in time that you can fill that won't take up that much space in the border. You can put them between the plants and it will give you a burst of colour when there's nothing else there. When all of these plants here have let you down, yeah, and it's not providing any colour and you've only got your evergreen stuff, 
out come these and they've got a wonderful burst of color in early spring. So what I want to do now is I want us to have a look and see how we put these in a border and make it look absolutely spectacular. The next thing now is to start placing them out in the border. In my, in the, for those that are doing the uh, placing plants and planning and designing borders, the best way to do this is on paper. Uh, and I've got another video and another tool that will show you how to do that. Um, but this is how to see planning out a border physically uh, within an actual garden. So you're gonna see how it's done because you'll see these shapes and things like that that you work with, but it's actually knowing how they represent plants. And this is what this video is all about, is to tell you how they actually physically uh, represent plants. And so the, the most important thing is the most important season is where we're at now. We're sort of into November and into winter. It's a really difficult time to create color in the garden. So what we wanna do is, is, like I said before, is to use the winter plants first, because that's gonna be your framework that you build everything around. So what we've got here, is a number of different um, winter plants. We've already gone through them. So if your border is going to be uh, at the, it's going to be viewed from the front. All of the tall stuff's got to go at the back. So we're going to take this holly, and we're going to put that at the back, like so. Um, you might want to think about uh, this. Um, this gets quite tall. This salix, uh, coloured stem salix. We can put that one at the back. And. Um, the, sometimes the, the, the choice of tonata that can be quite a tall plant so you can put that one at the back and what you've got there now is you've got a canvas an evergreen full all year round color backdrop that's really reliable that the other plants uh, can be shown off in front of um, it's there uh, it's dependable but actually it's quite exciting with these different colors of yellow and we've got the bright orange here and so what you then start to do is you start to work on um, layering down in height and what we've got to keep remember to keep doing is to remember to keep spreading the colour of interest at different times of the year throughout the border. Now, just one thing, if this was a border that you were going to do that's been viewed from both sides, so if, if we're going to view it from that side, we're going to view it from that side, then it's move all your tall stuff into the middle of the border. And something else that sometimes happens in borders that, as you're looking up the garden, so if that's your lawn that's there, Sometimes you, want to, might, want, you might want to create interest. So you might actually want to block off the view of part of the garden. So you take this really tall uh, juniper and we can put it there and it blocks out what's behind here and it might force somebody to say, I want to see what's the other side of that juniper. So there's the exception to the rule that someone is invited to look the other side of the tree. And wow, there's some more plants there and they look absolutely fantastic. So it's then looking at me medium sized plants then that go in front and so um, we've got um, this Euonymus. Again, it's got, we've got this lovely warm yellow theme that's going on. But again, if you've got something that's got purple variegation or purple leaves, they're going to really stand out through something called contrast. So it's going to contrast uh, when it's against there. Now, I'm getting a little bit worried about spring, so I'm going to put another shrub in. And this is sort of semi evergreen, is that Azara? So I'm going to put that one over here. And. Um, as we're starting to get a little bit lower, one of the most important plants that you probably want to learn, and this is a great thing about using plant names and using the knowledge that you get from plant names, is learning genuses, which is like the family name that gardeners use for plants. So this one's Viburnum. There's all sorts of Viburnums. This one's Viburnum davidii. Now this Viburnum davidii is quite a transient plant. At this time of year, we've got these lovely glossy green leaves. These petioles or leaf stems are lovely bright pink. Um, they have white flowers and blueberries. That's a plant that does like four or five different things different times of the year. That's a star plant. It's quite low growing. It can go towards the front like that. So we can see that we've started to build up an evergreen uh, winter backdrop. And so now when you look out of the window, there's something in the border. Yeah, if you look out on a winter's day, you know that you are guaranteed that you've got the colour there. So the next thing to do is then to start to spread out the colour elsewhere. So we're going to move back, go back in time, and we're going to go to the autumn. Because it's quite harsh, you'll see that a lot of these plants are, are quite harsh. And grasses are a really great way to soften in between a lot of these, um, these other plants that are there. So you can see that, that grass there, this New Zealand wind grass, sort of when you start to put it in between the plants, it sort of creates continuity and it creates, the eye starts to follow through it. And it's, 
playing with the light. It's painting with light. So that, that phone, as you can see there, reflects in the light back at you, and, it's, and it's, it's creating this lovely effect that's there. And also, we want to have a little bit of colour in the autumn. So in goes the Sedum Spectabilis. Nice and low, so it goes at the front. And so what we can start to do as well, remember what we said about the primulas and the cyclamen, that some of them flower in spring and some of them flower, well, very early spring and some of them flower in the autumn as well. So we can add those in as well. And we can start to see that we're building up layers of time, layers of color through the seasons. So that's autumn and we're moving into spring now. So remember we need something in late spring. So it's starting to look a bit poor in late spring. So I've got this Jacob's ladder, that's gonna go there. Even though it doesn't look like much now, it's going to grow up and it's going to look really amazing by late spring, early summer. And that's then when we come into the summertime and we can start adding um, the summer stuff into the border in between to give um, it all of that colour. And again, I've got this statue's Byzantine, which is nice low growing ground cover plant. Contrast there between um, the uh, sedum uh, and uh, the, st the statue's the lambs here. And then at the back here, we've got some more contrast that's happening. Don't plant each plant as you go, place it out and look where, so you can fiddle about and you can look at it from different ways. And then once you know it's in the right place, that's when you start to dig it in and plant it. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna show you how to plant the plants. We've got other videos where you can watch that. And also about preparing the soil, you've got other videos that you can watch about that. So this is more about planning where you're gonna put some, this is quite a tall plant, this Verbena bonoriensis. So again, it's gonna go in the middle here. And it's, you can see it's coming up above the rest and it's showing off and it's got that canvas behind of that beautiful um, uh, variegated poly. Again, try and get your herbs in, particularly towards the front of the border. I know mint does get quite tall, so if you want to sort of, you've got a space there. The mint so you can go and clip off a bit, put it in your sauces, uh, mint sauce, and then we've got uh, the sweet marjoram that goes along there and it's just adding some of them of your infill plants so again wherever there's a gap you can put your bedding plants normally they go along the front and they will just close up those gaps so like for example between june and into july there tends to be a lull in flowers a lot of flowers have, have really sort of burst out and gone through the spring and early summer uh, and they're starting to turn into seeds and so you're getting a lull between when there's another set of flowers that are coming your bedding plants are the ones that do that. So these annuals that you buy, your begonias, your geraniums, they're the ones that will fill those gaps in time and also fill those gaps in spaces. And what else you also need to remember is you've got your bulbs that you can put in. And so if you want like a February, March color, in goes the crocuses. So you, you place those in, you can see that we've got some gaps here at the front. Crocuses are quite low down. So we're starting to move those. And if you want to put stuff together, if you're buying stuff that's quite small, if you plant it in, in threes, they'll grow in together um, and you'll get like more of an impact. So like you might say, well, these grasses look like nothing in my border. They look absolutely tiny. And you say, well, I actually want to create some impact in the middle. So you might say, well, actually, I'll just put three together like that. And planting in threes and in odd numbers is a really great way of making the planting look natural. So there we go, we've got our three grasses together. And you can see, all of that together really creates impact okay so it's just having a bit of a play about to know where everything is going and so that you get it right and i noticed that on the on the corner here maybe if we put a, a hebe just to give a bit of extra color it's low down color and obviously here we've got this primula we can bring that to the front and again what you're always looking for as well is other bulbs so we've got the crocuses in daffodil Daffodils come in after the crocuses come in. And then you've got bluebells, and then you've got tulips. So really, with uh, your bulbs, if you plant them right, and you can plant them this time of year, before December, if you plant them ideally after December, what happens is um, they'll come up blind, they won't come up with a flower on. So you plant them in the autumn, you push them into the ground, and you, you think, oh, they've gone, they're never coming back here but they come in the spring and if you've planted crocuses, if you've planted daffodils, if you've planted bluebells, if you've planted tulips, you've pretty much covered all of spring and a little bit of winter 
and they're a real burst of colour and they stand out because there's nothing else in colour at that time other than like your sort of evergreen and also don't forget if you've got kids and you want to get a little bit more about out of the senses put in a strawberry so that you can pick some strawberries a bit later on now you'll see that this border is very very um, uh, packed in there's too many plants in here you can plant a border like this but you just got to remember that in about two or three years as this grows really big you might have to dig that one out chop it in half and put half in and give half to a friend or put another half in the garden somewhere else so stuff will have to come out but if you planted them with the distances that you're supposed to have in this border what you're going to find is is, is that it's going to look pretty um not, it's not going to look very full and so it could look quite boring so but what you just got to remember is to, to, to sort of over time you're going to have to take stuff out so maybe what even i might even say that hebe was a little bit too much we can get that there we've got a bit more space there now and that's probably better now and what you can do with that now is okay that's one section of your border if you've got like a really long border john what other plants can i do well you can repeat it you could go to uh, the garden center and buy three different types of holly you can buy one with white um variegation you can buy a, a normal green one you could buy different types of grasses you could buy stiper um, you can buy different types of viburnums where that viburnum is is there you can change it for another viburnum if you've got acidic soil you might want to put in a rhododendron that's low growing that's, that, that performs in a similar way to that there's different types of sedums that you can buy there's different types of euonymus that you can buy so you, you you're learning these genus plants these family names and literally you just buy different species a variety of them and repeat it and it creates a pattern and you know because you've tried it now especially this time of year you know that that border is going to look great all year round because you've just done it in one section you've made sure you've got enough spring plants you've made sure you've got enough summer plants you've made sure you've got uh, enough autumn plants and you made sure you've got enough winter plants so that's the sunny border you've got a challenge you might not have a sunny border it might be a shady border it's in the shade of trees and things like that or in the shade of a house uh, or it's on a north facing slope so what plants do you put in well here's a range of shade plants and again you've created that effect of um, all year round uh, color though you'll notice that this table is less full than, uh, than the last one because it's quite difficult to find plants that like shade particularly dark shade but some of these are, these are pretty good uh, in 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 the shade now there's two types of shade there's dry shade and there's wet shade um, most of these will survive in that the only one that's the odd one out is the aquilegia that does prefer wet shade so you'd have to make sure you mulch it uh, and keep giving it plenty of water so the first place we're going to start again is the winter so instead of having that lovely holly that we've got there we've got this beautiful spotted laurel and it thrives in the shade it needs to have the shade otherwise it starts to look anemic and sort of yellow in color has white flowers uh, red berries and the main thing is these lovely glossy spotted leaves quite tall so it goes towards the back of the border now remember you've got viburnum and that's what's really interesting about viburnums is they can move between the areas so that viburnum davidii that we liked on that one that one can go in here as well so viburnum davidii goes there and also we've got viburnum tinus bit taller uh, you can see the leaves are slightly different but this one again has flowers that come through the winter it's got that evergreen foliage it does as a moth that sort of uh, caterpillar that does eat at it you've got to watch that keep cutting those old leaves back but it does give some great winter backdrop color and again you can get variegated versions of this um, so that um, you can create that contrast and difference now a lot of people ask me John what I want is I want a shrub that grows up to about that tall and then stops and is really easy to look after and this is the one that I normally point them towards which is skimmia uh, skimmia japonica meaning it comes from Japan I think this one's rubella so it's got like red uh, uh, red uh, flowers or sort of dark pink flowers that turn into red berries if you've got a male and a female um, and again it loves the shade uh, it stays as a nice ball and a lovely shape and so uh, if you've got a shade garden as a shrub in the middle of the border not at the back it's a great plant that will show off now what's really interesting about shade plants plants that love the shade is a lot of your perennials tend to also give winter color 
So I've got this one here. Now I've got two of them here. I've got they're called elephant's ears or Regina cordifolia. Regina cordifolia have like a begonia-like flower that comes on in February, March, but it has these wonderful glossy leaves that cover the ground, prevent weeds from coming up. And the really nice thing about it, even though it's herbaceous growth, that's soft green growth, not woody growth. The reason, even though um, it has this soft green growth, it keeps it all the year round. And if you get a frost that catches it right, you get these lovely bright red leaves. They're not going to fall off. Yeah, they're going to stay on and they're going to look stunning. And then have a wonderful flower that comes up in March and February. And so finding winter colour is a challenge. Finding colour that comes in December. But there's another one which is called hellebore. Now, this time of year and through the, through the summer, they're helleboring. But actually in the winter, they're helly exciting because up comes, they're called Christmas roses, and up come these wonderful flowers. If you saw them in the summer, you wouldn't think they were that amazing. But because you see it in the garden, when it's stark and bare, and there's not much going on, they really stand out and pack a punch. So there's all sorts of hellebore. If you want just a really easy one to grow, um, the hellebore nigra is, is fantastic. But yeah, there's all sorts of different coloured flowers that you can get, and they flower through different times through the winter. Um, and you'll find those at your garden centre. And again, another one here, Pachisandra or Pandora's box. Uh, this one here, lovely ground cover plant, prevents the weeds from coming up, loves the shade. And again, it behaves itself. It grows up to about one foot in height. And uh, basically what happens is it um, stops at that height, covers the ground and suppresses the weeds. And it, and it, and it pretty much gives that lovely green color all year round and will give a nice white flower through the spring and summer. Um, one of the, if you want a spring colour perennial, we've got this viola, which basically is what, uh, it's a woodland viola, which uh, is a, a lot of your pansies and things have been bred from that plant. This one here uh, produces lovely blue flowers in the spring. And then we've got another one here called the aquilegia. These ones have lovely, um, the, the flowers look like hummingbirds, all sorts of different colours, purples, oranges, yellows. And what they do uh, is they spread quite nicely through uh, the uh, shade areas. But again, you have to keep them uh, moist, even though it's in the shade area. Um, and that gives you that sort of, sort of May sort of colour. Now, in really troublesome areas, such as underneath a conifer, hedge that's really dry, think about your lamiums, dead nettles. These ones are cultivated dead nettles. And this one here is a low-growing lamium has pink flowers that flower quite freely through uh, the um, growing season, but also has beautiful white variegations in the leaf. Remember, a leaf that is variegated is much more, is much, much more uh, reliable than what a flower is. So low growing behaves itself and will really behave itself in dry, shady conditions. So um, that's sort of, uh, just sort of, a, a small selection of plants that like the shade and they're pretty common and you can pick them up at the garden centers um, and what I'm going to do is show, how, show you now how to arrange them in your border. So here we've got our shade border. Um, most of the things that cause shade are things like conifer trees, so conifer hedges. We've got one up there uh, that casts uh, shadow so if um, you're in a south facing garden at the bottom of the garden you've got that conifer hedge that's going to create a shade area. Um, north facing gardens are normally in a lot of shade, shade from the house, shade from a hill. So it's one of the most challenging areas to find plants for, deep shade especially, but dappled shade is great. You could normally get away with a, a wider variety of plants. So we're going to start taking our shade loving plants. So again at the back of the border, I think I'm going to put this one right in the middle because it's quite a showcase plant, um, is the uh, spotted laurel. And again we've got this laurus tinus. This, uh, uh, viburnum tinus, sorry, it's a Loris tinus is a common name. And again, remember it's relative Viburnum davidii. That's going to take centre stage because it's one of those plants that earns its keep. It produces berries, blueberries, white flowers. It's got evergreen leaves. It's got pink um, petioles or leaf stems that are on there that make it stand out. And another one of my favourite ones here is the skimmia, which is sort of medium sized. And then we're going to put Regina cordifolia. That's going to go in sort of more closer to the front because 
it is quite low, a low growing plant. And what we're starting to do, we're starting to build up that colour. Now, this one's something really special, the hellebore. So I want to get that around about there so that it stands out. The pa Pachysandra, if you've got a few of these, you can put them, dot them all the way around. And the viola, that can go over there. And then we've got the aquilegia, we can put these in and dot them around. And at the front here, all, all the way along the front, you can buy more of them. So remember, buy them in threes, fives, sevens, odd numbers, and put them around, dot them around the border, or put them in clumps together to make them stand out. We start to move them uh, along like that. And you're starting to, what you're starting to do is you're starting to really fill out the border, and it's starting to look like there's interest there. And again, you can repeat that. You can buy different varieties of skimmia. You can buy different varieties of viburnum. You can buy different varieties of hellebore. Just repeat it in the next one along and you've created that pattern and you've created that interest all the year round. And you'll notice that your winter framework is there in place and it's just been dead easy to add the spring and summer colour. And don't forget, you can also add your bulbs. So remember, a lot of shade that if it comes from trees that are deciduous, yeah, bulbs take advantage of a period of time when there's no leaves on the trees. So add your crocuses into there, add your bluebells into there, and that will take advantage of the time of year, especially if you're under deciduous trees, when it's um, basically, there's nothing else there in the garden, and all that you've got <coughs> is uh, trees that have no leaves on them. They're coming up and they stand out because the garden looks so bare and desolate and one other thing to think about is how you're as well you're going to shape the plants okay so some people let them grow into each other and you'd be surprised just, just how, about what type of plants you might decide to put into a border so let's say you were going to you're in your sun garden or you, you've got a little bit more sunlight you're going to put something like a box in even though that's static color the box can create so much more interest so it's static evergreen color that's put in there but as it grows over time, just watch what you can do to totally and utterly change the feel of the garden or the border because you can topiarise it. And you'll notice now it's totally and utterly changed the feel of that border just by changing the shape. And so this is what you've got to remember about a lot of these plants. It's too, there's too much in there, it's too packed. But that's not a problem for another two or three years. What you've got to remember is that some of these plants, you're going to be able to cut back really hard. So like, for example, we spoke about this willow. That one, you cut back really hard. Why? Because these new crops of stems will come up. So if you cut it back in March, a new crop of luscious stems will come up, providing that lovely winter stem color. You can see the old stems from last year. It's fading. It's not it's nowhere near as good, okay? So it's being able to look after these plants once they are in. But to be quite honest, if you were looking at this border and you were gonna say, well, let's just make sure that, that we've just put the plants in there um, for the spread that we have. If I was totally honest with you, this is what the border would actually look like. So you'd probably have that there, that there, that there, that there that there so if you can wait a couple of years you've saved yourself a lot of money and the great thing about the bulbs in they just go in between no problem and that's it so if you haven't got a great deal of money that's fine the amount of plants that we have in there are absolutely fine because they're all going to grow into each other it's going to be just nice but if you want to pack it out a bit remember you can dig stuff up if you want to dig up a shrub dig it up in the winter uh ideally sort of early winter, late autumn, when everything's gone dormant, dig it up, put it in a pot or plant it somewhere else. Make sure you get as much root on the bottom as possible and keep the roots covered over and dig it up. And you can put it somewhere else or give it to somebody else or throw it away, do, do what you like. And also with the perennials, this time of year in the autumn and in the early spring, you can dig a perennial up, like this one here. And if you think, well, that's, that perennial's got too big, you can literally cut the whole thing in half. As long as you've got a shoot and a root or you've got foliage and roots on the bottom, you can plant the other half and give the other half to a friend or plant it somewhere else in the garden. And so that's what we start to see that even if you packed too many plants in your border, doesn't matter. 
because you can always dig stuff out, cut stuff back um, and uh, propagate stuff through division. But what's important to think of now is that a border isn't going to be complete. If you want a border to look absolutely amazing and to give you colour all the year round, you've got to get it into your head that it's going to take work because a garden when it's complete is dead. Your border is not going to be dead, it's going to be living, it's going to be alive. So you will need to give it attention and care. Just one other thing to think about when you go to the garden centre. If you can buy British, try and buy British because it hasn't got a massive carbon footprint. If you can go to a nursery and buy directly from them, you know it's been grown in that area. If you can buy stuff that hasn't been grown in peat, we like at Oak Dean Nurseries, we grow our stuff in a loam based compost. And what you're always looking for is a really good root structure when it comes out the pot. If you pull it out the pot and all soil fill, fill, fills over it, I'd be really dubious about that. So when you go in, always look to see at the bottom of the pot, are there any little roots that are coming out the bottom? You know it's containerized, and you know that when you put it in your border, all the soil's not gonna fall away and collapse, and it's gonna be great. And that's what you're looking for with the plant. And also make sure it's been well looked after, it's, it's not dry, um, and it's a plant that you, if let's say you were gonna buy the plant for somebody else, and you were give it, gonna give it to them as a present, and they were really picky, uh, and it was like, you know, like a relative that's, that's a bit snooty, yeah? that's how you think about buying a plant like you were buying it for someone that's very critical because you deserve that you deserve the nicest and best plant for your garden